You're listening to the Black Eagles podcast with Sinan Schwarting and Khan Bayazit. Welcome back, everybody. Episode 39 of the Black Eagles podcast. I'm your host, Sinan Schwarting, live from New York City. And as always, co-hosting with me is yours truly, Khan Bayazit. Applause, sir. I feel like you're uh, flying a little bit there, like almost always. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. You gotta, you gotta embellish, right? Yeah. If everything uh, goes right, then uh, you'll have to uh, find someone else for next uh, next uh, Thursday, I think. Is it no, the week after? Of the following. Uh, yeah, we have yeah, we have for, one one week to prepare to yeah, find for, a co-host, for, or or for, I can go solo. We'll see. Yeah, that. for the gank away game. Uh, we, my, we're gonna get a good a- after the beep from you there. Well, hopefully side. my my my, my father in law was supposed to hook me up with tickets, um, but uh, he got business seats, which I yeah right a yeah, little pricey. That, that was a little pricey to my liking. So hopefully he can get me some normal uh, tickets. Um, not going to pay 155 euros a ticket. Uh, Treat to yourself. Watch, Treat to yourself. Watch us, to watch us uh, get spanked again. Um, no. Uh, anyway, uh, hopefully I'll be uh, in gang then uh, on the 8th of November. Um, but if not, then I'll of course just be here with you. But uh, let's let's focus on the now. Yeah, uh, on the present. Today. We actually have good. We have something positive to uh, to talk about for a change. Yeah. Let's let's do it. Let's jump right into it. What do you, what do you, what? Why don't you run us through it, Khan? Well, like our, the, our uh, you know viewers who are in the dark for those who were not fortunate enough to watch this one. In well, fact, let's set up the the weekend for people maybe with uh, with the results of the other teams. Uh, I think that's at this point ten weeks into the into the season that might be prudent. I, I had uh, I had a fun. If you will close your eyes for a minute, imagine it's the summer of two thousand and eleven. I don't know okay. what's the what's the music that's on back then. We've got uh, I'm guessing probably like Bruno Mars is just breaking out. Oh, you're um, you're asking the wrong person. Yeah, like... I know. I mean, I'm not even a big pop guy, so. But you know, picture yourself in the summer of 2011, and the news has hit. We have signed a young, promising Turkish striker oh. <laughs> by the name of Mustafa Pekdemir. Oh my god, I see what you did there. <laughs> um, and oh so, for a minute, right? For for like a good summer, some of us were riding on a high, thinking, look what we've got ourselves. We've got ourselves that... Because he, I think he may have been on the threshold of breaking into the Turkish national team. Uh, we snatched him up from Gensler, right? From Gensler. Yeah, Gensler really, yeah. Um, I think- a nice fee too, like four and a half or something. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And signed yeah. him up for a long-term, hefty contract, thinking we'd stolen a gem. <laughs> yeah, at the time, he was a promising player, but you know those injuries yeah, that yeah. Uh, that nixed his career a little bit. Um, but yeah, the Mustafa Bektemek playing uh, uh, an important role in today's result. But uh, to set it up, seven first, years later. He comes let's back. Go, <laughs> the go prod- back to prodigal s- son. Okay, but yeah, sorry. I just wanted to do a, little, a fun little thought experiment there. Uh, maybe I'll cue up some of that music that I was talking about. So, <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, let's. How about this? I'll don't run. Copyright. That's right. Yeah, fair enough. Right. I don't want to get us in any trouble. I'll run us through the, the, the week, the results that led into the match, and then you can run us through the, the match itself. How about that, Yeah, Khan? Go ahead. So, you yeah, know, that's a good idea because there were a lot of fun results this weekend, actually. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're laughing, God. So, to, to, to lead us off, 
Uh, I mean, and I'll only mention the big results, I suppose. But Bash Bashakshi here beat Konyaspor on the road, which was a good result for them, to be sure. Um, it was uh, Bayic who scored for them yeah. in the sixth. Ironically, minute. so the former Konyaspor man who mm -hmm. got sold to Udinese and returned to Turkey on loan to Bashakshi. I, I think he's still on loan. At least he was on loan last year. I don't know if they made it permanent. Um, but yeah. That's so uh, he, 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 uh, speaking of a prodigal son. Yeah, he he returned and gave them a headache, uh, but that's probably very good for Pashakti here, and we'll get into why. Um, for the sake of uh, brevity, I don't. Know, I'll mention Trabzon got a, a draw on the road against Antalyaspor because in fact Antalyaspor is more of a threat at the, to the top of the table this season so far. Uh, Dukara put them ahead in the 15, 15th minute, Antalyaspor. I mean. And then Burakio Mas levels it on the 28th minute, granted on a penalty, naturally. But um, yeah, Trabzon got a result on the road against Antalyaspor. And that's actually, you know, again, Antalyaspor is, is in a better position than Trabzon even. Yeah, but if Trabzon win that game, they're, they're only uh, five points clear from the top. So yeah. that would uh, put them right in the tick of things. In so. fact, I think had we lost... And Travis on one, they may have even surpassed us, which, you know, anyway. Yeah, they, yeah. Didn't happen. Or even with a draw, they, they have 16, I think they have 16 points right now, so, uh, but so that, just check that. That was it for the for the big results on Saturday. Uh, the, I think the Travis on match was the sort of featured match of the weekend, you know, on B ends or whatever. But, uh, of course, the big results came in on Sunday, yesterday, uh, as of our recording. Uh, and Yeni Malatyaspor with a big victory at home against Galatasaray, uh, two to nil. Uh, Donald, Donald, I guess <laughs> I'm never <laughs> counting it like the guy. I'm, uh, uh, Donald scored in the 35th minute, and Adem Biyuk in the 66th minute on a penalty. Shout out to Adem yeah. Biyuk. I have not forgotten that I, I singled him out after <laughs> his match with us as like the. I was uh, just going to say your favorite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have not forgotten you, my nemesis. But yeah, uh, Malatya Spor came out victorious. So I'll give him, you know, a tip of the cap for that. Yeah, uh, it might seem surprising to outsiders looking in. But if you looked at the, the injury status that Galt I have, you know, I think six or so uh, relatively key players injured. Uh, Nagatomo, Fernando, uh, Eren Derdiok wasn't there, uh, Onyekuru was injured, Serdar Aziz, you know, there's lots of big names for them, lots of starters for them, and if you if you just glance over their bench, I think they had, it was full of youth players, and uh, I think they were even a man short on the bench, perhaps. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, given the fact that Yeni Malatya are, aren't a bad team, um, and and adding to that, that Scouts right were dealing with a lot of injuries, plus the fact that they aren't as good on the road to begin with. They aren't as good in. I mean, Scouts right aren't having a, a fantastic season either. They're better than than we have been, but they're also mediocre at best, I'd say. And uh, this might not be that big of a surprise if you're watching. Uh, the details of it closely and yeah, yeah. Um, yeah good result for Malatya and, and, and again a great performance I thought from um, what's his face uh, <laughs> their, their central defender I forgot his name for a moment but um, not a great performance from him um, no, I don't know. I forgot his name now. I'm blanking on. I, I turned 30 years old today, so <laughs> okay. I'm allowed. I'm allowed to spaz out on names. I'll leave that one in then, <laughs> since you're giving yourself a yeah, happy birthday to Khan. Speaking of which, <laughs> um, but so then I suppose the even perhaps more exciting result <laughs> uh, came later in the day with Fener at home. And I'm gonna. I, I want to give us. I want to mention their, their their stadium's name, the Ulker Stade. <laughs> I didn't even know they changed it. And uh, they also came out with it's sponsors. Been, it's been a few years, actually. I hadn't. You know, it's so funny that they sold out and didn't even get. You know, any uh, whatever. And so then they had Avis across their shirts. They have a sponsor finally. Uh, and they were hosting Ankara Guju, You know, newly promoted side. Mm-hmm. And uh, it didn't go very well for them. They lost one to three, uh, and their one goal came in the 89th minute. So 
So Fati scored in the 35th minute. Luz Gench in the 74th minute on a penalty. Uh, Mustafa El Kabir in the 77th minute. We might recall his name from our match against him. Uh, them. He was pretty active against us, as I recall. <clears throat> and then Frey, uh, you know, redeemed them. Perhaps at the 89th minute a little bit. Uh, at Slimani had given himself a, a red card in the 71st minute. I guess that's probably of note since two goals were scored after that. Yeah, they're playing Galatasaray this coming week. We're playing Bashakshi here. So week 11 is going to be very interesting, And so, especially just, if we look at the standings. Just of note, I thought it could be fun to mention that for the, the bottom of the table, <laughs> <laughs> in, in the relegation zone, I, and I mention this now because the results just come in. Akhisar defeated Guztepe um, at home, I believe. I, I don't think that was... Yeah, Akhisar was at home. But So that's mm -hmm. that's of note because now all yeah. uh, Erzurum also got a result on the weekend. So Rize and Akhisar have eight points and uh, Erzurum score have seven. With Fener right above them in, 15th, in the 15th spot with nine points. So, oh, you're enjoying this, <laughs> aren't you? <laughs> you are relishing this moment. I, I, come on, man. Come on, man. Uh, and the, here's here's a, a, a fun asterisk. Before I, I pass the mic to Khan for him to get into our match, it should be noted that had things not gone our way today and had Rizespor defeated us, they would have 11 points which would be two points higher than Fener, pushing Fener into the relegation zone. So with that said, we're playing to help Fener out today. We're, we're doing a <laughs> charitable act. So Khan, I passed you the mic. How did we do? Yeah, we'll get back to the top of the league table after this, but uh, Besiktas tonight coming off back-to-back uh, -back losses in the league. First last week against Gustepe 2-0. Uh, and then, of course, on Thursday, that that, well, for some painful defeat at home against Racing Genk, 2-4. Uh, Today was a do-or-die match mm -hmm. for Besiktas, a must-win game for Chanel Gunesh and, and, and the players, I think, to retain the support of the fans. Um, I, you know, I didn't there, have the... I'm not sure. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Yeah, let's let, let's, let's dig right into it. So Besiktas start off the game in... Um, uh, an, an or unorthodox uh, formation. Mm -hmm. Finally, some change. I think we could say, although one could argue that it was definitely uh, forced due to injuries and suspensions. But uh, basically, starting in a four-four-two formation with, uh, of course, Loris Carius in goal, Adriano returning at left back, Kukan Gunnel reprising his role on right back, Enzo Rocco joining Vida in the central of defense, and then in midfield we had Oshan and Atiba. Uh, for the two central midfielders, and then on the wings, Ricardo Quaresma and uh, Gokan Torres starting for the first time since, I believe, 2016 in a league game for Besiktas. And up top was Wagner Love and Mustafa Pektemek. Um, and and Sinan already alluded to it earlier, Mustafa Pektemek, the, <laughs> returning, the returning hero. Uh, after just three minutes, he put Besiktas in front 1-0. Um, across from Ricardo Quaresma, Pektemek popping up at the at the near post and, and with a good uh, good anticipation, decent shot which took a deflection I believe one 0 after just three minutes, uh, and things didn't go uh, get, went from from bad to worse for for the visitors tracker Rizespor as in the tenth minute Orhan Ovacikla was sent off with a direct red card after a tackle on Gokan Tore. This was a VAR decision. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it was a correct decision, although I, I don't believe there was any malice in his tackle, but yeah, he didn't even yellow, protest maybe. a red card. Yeah, yeah. yeah perhaps. Uh, I, I think it was, a, it was a reckless challenge, though, hmm. without malice, but reckless is, is enough for, for a red. Uh, in the 31st minute, Ricardo Quaresma got himself booked, and that means he will not be participating in next week's Darby. Uh, so that's good news for Germain Lens fans, which I think the podcast is on the record as being officially. So, yeah, that's actually a silver lining, maybe. 
uh, a fourth substitution in the 33rd minute as Gokhan Dura was taken off, injured. Uh, the, the guy just can't stay healthy. Uh, General Erkin coming on as a sub. I'm not sure if Gokhan might have picked up that injury due to that Orhan Ovacikla tackle. Uh, he seemed lively after the tackle, so I'm not sure whether that was the problem. Um, but in the 40th minute, Mustafa Bektemek with a header this time, doubles Besiktas' advantage. Again, Ricardo Quaresma with the assist, and that was also the scoreline at half time. Uh, at half at, at half time, Okan Buruk, uh, Chaiko Rizespor's coach, made a change and uh, put Mehmet on for Fink. Uh, not uh, our old Fink, by the way. And then in the 48 minutes, a uh, yellow card for Domagoj Vida. I don't think that had, had any repercussions. And then Vidat Muric scored for Chaiko Rizespor on a corner. He got the goal. I think that should have been an own goal, though. I'm... No, I think it was counted uh, for Enzo Roko in the end. It mm, came okay. Off well, it was a it was a clear, clear, yeah. clear, clear fall on Rocco. Um, yeah, for sure. He, Bill and the referee of the night, uh, did communicate with the VAR room in his earpiece, but uh, decided not to take a look at the play uh, and, and and allowed the goal, which is a puzzling decision. This should have always been disallowed. Now that VAR is available, um, but uh, yeah. It stood for some reason. Uh, Adriano then got booked in the 58th minute right after uh, Wagner Love was brought down in the box, which to everyone in the world seemed like a clear penalty position. Um, again, a VAR check ensued after that, after the yellow card and the stoppage of play for Adriano. And Blunt Hildrum this time did go and take a look at... Um, did actually go take a look at, at what happened there and uh, b- awarded the penalty. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do think I do think it also means that Adriano's yellow card is therefore uh, abolished. Ooh, uh, yeah. Then we have two more. Uh, then we have a, a, a yellow card for Sadane who uh, caused the penalty position. Some say it should have been red. I, I think yellow was fine. Um, Ricardo Quaresma stepped up, missed the penalty, or rather, I should say, Gokhan Akan saved it. Although it was a, this was a poor penalty. I think last week I said that Oshan's penalty wasn't, wasn't by any means terrible, but this was a very poor attempt from Quaresma. Sadani it, then, of, uh, it oddly kind of resembled Oshan's penalty, I thought, but. Nah, this one was a very was was too soft. Uh, nowhere near going towards uh, the side netting. Uh, this was uh, too central, too soft, too easy. Uh, it was a low penalty too. I think Olsen's penalty was decently placed. Uh, this one was just not good. Uh, but Sadane, after the penalty was missed, actually got another yellow card and got yeah. sent off. So Rizespor down to ten men, uh, nine <coughs> men. Sorry. At that point, after 61 minutes, I don't know what happened there. He something. Uh, he must have said something to the ref. Right? Yeah, obviously he, should, he probably said something. I have no clue what. But uh, then in the 65th minute, uh, something of note: Oshan got subbed off for Gary Medel, and uh, the fans booed Oshan. Yeah. It seemed like, and then uh, which Medell. I. Yeah which I thought was uh, in, in poor taste. Uh, then some, some subs uh, and then another goal in the 72nd minute, which uh, also was uh, given as an own goal, but uh, Janner was the one taking the final shot uh, there. Um, another, I think, cross from uh, Ricardo Quaresma, but uh, if it's counted as an own goal, he won't be getting that assist, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, uh, then there was one more goal, of course. Uh, towards the end of the game. He got his uh, uh, weekly goal. For Wagner Love in the 79th minute. And then Bistesh had a couple of more uh, attempts, uh, but Gokhan Akan played a good game, kept uh, his net clean for the rest of the remainder of the match. Uh, Guven Yalcin, who came on in the 80th minute for uh, Adriano, made a good impression. The mm-hmm. young, mm-hmm. Uh, I think he's like 20 years old right now, uh, made, a, made, a, made, a, made a good, had a few uh, lively moments, but uh, couldn't get past Gokhan Akan had uh, two or three attempts I think um, but the full time scoreline reads Besiktas 4 Chaiku Rizespor 1 and Besiktas with that win move up to 18 points which is within striking distance of their opponent next week Medipol Bashakshi here or who are in first place with 21 points Galatasaray and Kasim Pasha both have 19 points so we're right with, back in it <laughs> with Galatasaray and Fenerbahce playing a derby next week uh, you never know what's going to happen there and Besiktas playing Medipol Bashakshi here it is within very well possible that Besiktas are top of the table next week with 21 points but of course um 
Başak uh, Şehir, uh, our team that has been giving us trouble even when we were good. Yeah. Now that we are far from good, they'll uh, probably give us even more trouble. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <clears throat> so, but I will say, the... Chanel Ganesh probably saved his job. At the, I mean, as if it was, it probably wasn't actually on the line anyway. But yeah. he definitely uh, instilled confidence, probably in everyone. I think. Also, to his advantage, it's of note that Fener has fired their coach, Koku. And I think mm -hmm. when your rival has that kind of uh, chaos and uncertainty in front of them, it, you know, my first thought was that this is actually probably good for Shino Gunesh. Because then, you know, it's, uh, it, the, 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 even if it's just an illusion of stability, it's just one more thing you have over your rival that's like, you know, in crisis mode right now. So. You know, maybe. <sighs> I don't know, but I don't want to talk much about that. I, in fact, <clears throat> I want to return to our usual format since we actually have some football to talk about this week. But so first, let me just quickly do our little stat flash, you know, or, or correction, if you will, you know, where we can analyze these stats. And, uh, you know, for, for those who didn't watch the match, sort of sh sh explain whether or not they're a good reflection of what actually happened out there. Um Today they may be, you know, because it really was, I think, a dominant performance on Besiktas' part. Shots were 26 to 5 in Besiktas' favor, 12 on target to 2. Possession, 63% to their 37. Passes, 553 to their 333. Accuracy, 84% to their 69. So they didn't breach. For me, that 70% mark is a kind of threshold. Uh, you know, and we've actually, I've noted that we've lost quite a few matches where our opposition hasn't, hasn't even passed that threshold, which for me was very alarming. Um, today, obviously, that was not the case. 12 fouls apiece, you know, on each side. We got three cards, uh, three yellows, rather. They got two reds. So <laughs> I don't know if we could even say that bounced out. I think we, were, we, we win that battle. Uh, and then offsides, they had five to our two. That wasn't a big thing. Set corners, we had quite a few, seven. To their two, and I think that's reflective of all the shots we had on goal. So statistically, you know, that's that that says we had a very dominant performance, uh, and I think today that's probably an accurate reflection of what happened out there. Wouldn't wouldn't you say? I mean, even when things weren't that exciting, we were holding the ball, and you know, I mm, I didn't think we dominated this match the way we should have, given that our opponents were down to. Ten men after just ten minutes, and down to nine men after sixty minutes. I think there should have been a lot more uh, suffocating. I think there should have been a lot more control. I think we still allowed them to win too many duels. Uh, this, this, we, we again. I mean, I think we started well. I think our our our, our start was lively. And when I saw a lot of our. Uh, friends and and, and you, I think you included uh, be a little bit oh finally some some soul some uh, there's there, you know the this looks promising and and this seems there's been a change but I felt like after the one nil we just fell quickly back into our own our rut yeah for sure uh, and I I think that there's of course you know you're missing key players uh you're missing someone who is supposed to be an, uh, an instrumental cog in this machine which is adam light you're missing your biggest goal threats arguably with ryan babel um jermaine lens is not available uh, pepe is not available which doesn't heavily impact uh or, or shouldn't heavily impact how we perform in midfield and all that stuff, but Leitch not being there and, and Ryan slash Lentz uh, not being there, that's that's important, uh, but not an excuse in order to not utterly destroy nine men at home coming off the poor results you have been coming off. I expected more of a reaction from the team. Uh, well, I don't know. But I should rephrase it. I didn't really expect it, but there should have been more of a reaction. Right. I think that given um, the circumstances of this game, if 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 Riza doesn't go down to ten men after ten minutes, I don't know whether this would have been such a. I think we would have won this game regardless. But I think the scoreline would have definitely not been as impressive. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It just all just still kind of feels like 
there nothing really cha nothing really changed we were up against an opponent that wasn't as good i wouldn't say Riza are t a terrible side despite the fact that they are they are in the relegation zone i think they haven't they hadn't lost their previous four games um i they have been pretty decent this season but they have been failing at dragging their results across the finish line they have a lot of those games where they take the lead but then can't um can't galvanize that and, and lose two points which ironically is what we've kind of been having in our away games too uh so i wouldn't say Riza are our terrible side but um Bista should have done so much more today i think uh and and there's it's a sl maybe a slight little improvement but that, like that one little uh spark of hope that you could get by oh finally shinal good is just changing things up the tactics yeah. to me four, four, two. yeah to Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was. But then I, but then I just think again that I he, he just got forced into that. Would he have done that if he had Babel available, if he had Lens available, if he had Lige available? I think if he had those people available, it would have just been a another four two three one formation like he just does. It's I think I've said it before. Gunesh only makes tactical changes when he's forced to make tactical changes, not because he wants to change things up. He's just too pragmatic. Yeah, uh, I'd like to make days. a sort of note here that if, if any of that noise is transmitting through the final recording, I'd like to apologize. This is, they're doing some weird facade work on the building like, to fix it. And it's like, it kind of sounds like the entire building has diarrhea or <laughs> it's farting. But so apologies if that transmits through. I'll try to take it out in the edit. But uh, yeah, that's annoying. Um, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I mean, yeah. There are some unknowns at work there, if I'm going to play the devil's advocate today, insofar as, you know, because so many guys were lacking and, in, you know, injured, you don't know if the tactical change was, you know, something consciously done because clearly the team was struggling and something needed to be done, or if it was something done out of necessity. Uh, and you hope there was at least... A mix of the two, right? <laughs> of course, there's some aspect of it which has to do with necessity, but mm -hmm. you hope he'd recognize that there was a need for some tweaking to be done there. And and you know that that ultimately today that proved to be of good effect. Uh, you know what what the fear I have in the same way. So Love scored again and is like what third game in a row, and, but uh, again, kind of against the run of play in a moment where it wasn't very vital. Uh, Pectimex scores twice. He has his little Rabona there. Like, look, no doubt it was a great performance from him. And I joke about the summer of 2011 and all that. Great. But let's be realistic. He's not the solution for this club right now. Yeah, he had a couple of good passes also throughout the game, but I didn't think he was phenomenal at any point. Uh, you know, those two goals, he did well to position himself for those. The, the second one I thought was a very good header. But it needs to be noted that um, assisted both of those and had another one as well. Yeah. Three assists. And, and actually, I will say, those were good if anyone was lively today, Quaresma came out with a lot of energy. He was even attacking the goal in certain instances. So, you know, like he's someone we like yeah. to slag on a lot, even here, honestly. Um, but... but he showed a reaction for yeah. sure to to the booing last last game. I think he's one of those players that can show a positive reaction to something like that. But then again, I think he was in in certain situations he was far too selfish. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. I, mean, uh, always be the, I think. It, <laughs> yeah, I think at four one there was a position where he went on toward goal, and and I, I'm not sure if it was Love or if it was Given or or, or Mustafa. I'm not sure who it was that was running. Uh, so weird to even be towards <laughs> towards the far post, yeah. uh, but he could have squared it there, and that would have probably been the fifth. Mm -hmm. But he decides to go for glory himself. I, at four one, you can do that, but I would just like the, the problem that I have with that with Quaresma is that he gets a, a lot of assists from from crosses, from early crosses. Uh, he gets a lot of assists from corners, from set pieces. But when it comes to laying off the ball. He always seems to lose sight of things. Mm -hmm. He always loses track of who's with yeah, him. Yeah. Like that's one of those things that I, I, I and his touch if, if is Quaresma, been surprisingly off, even you know, which is yeah. But if Quaresma could have that in this game, like being able to lay off the ball, keep it, keep his head cool in the box, he would be 
such an amazing player. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is an amazing player, but I think if he could do that in a grand context, yeah, con- consistently, I don't, you know, then then he would have gotten so much more out of his career mm-hmm. if he could do that. If he could be more effective in the box and and just keep it simple. Sometimes, you know, um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even bashing on this Trivellas and this Rabonas because that's that's him. That's his game. If you don't like that. That's too bad, then. That that's just yeah, him. And, but and they've in the box, even so, you know, you can't even question. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, yeah, I agree. But in the box, he needs to be more, more selfless at at times. Mm-hmm. Uh, but whatever, that's just the way he is. He's not going to yeah, change. He's thirty-five exactly, years old. Exactly. So. <laughs> that's the best. I mean, but so all right. Now, since we have some real football to talk about here, let's let's try to like let's organize ourselves. Let's get back to our format, highlights and lowlights, and let's. For a change, since we haven't really been able to do this in a while, let's talk about some highlights. And I think we you know we, mm-hmm. we just talked about Quaresma a little bit, but I doubt either one of us is going to put him as our man of the match, despite his three assists. Uh, and I think he probably deserves some mention in that regard. But uh, do you want to go first? Do you have someone in mind? I, I honestly, I, I don't really. Well, so I'll let I me mean, go there's first. the obvious. I, wanna, I, I, I had someone in mind. Uh, and it's a it's okay. a tandem. I've I've talked about this before, you know. I use the uh, the James Brown, give the drummer some, give the defense some. You know, today I really felt that the Vida Rocco pairing was very solid. And again, you know, find the own goal, but he was being pushed at the neck. Like that was a that that mm-hmm. goal shouldn't have stood. Uh, and all in all, they were solid back there. I have to say, Vida, I I liked seeing him playing a stabilizing force for a change. You have to bear in mind that with Pepe's contract coming to an end th- this summer, this is likely our, our defensive tandem, you know, for some time to come, unless we decide we need to make an, uh, an upgrade on Rocco. But, you know, especially in the case of Vita, we're likely to see him starting for some time, I have a feeling. You know, I don't think that those offers that we were getting, theoretically getting... Unless he gets sold. Yeah, uh, after the World Cup, are, are going to still be there, you know, unless there's some dire circumstance with some more you know but barring that you know i really feel that today they were there was promise there they showed something very positive you know and and uh despite games that may have been sort of aberrations like pectamek or love you know where they they the the end result isn't reflective of their total output i think uh those guys earned a clean sheet today, honestly. And and shout out to Karius too. I don't really think he had too much to do, honestly. But uh, you know, yeah, I really felt good about the Rocco Vida pairing today for a change. But you're up against you're up against Reza. You're up against ten men yeah, and, from, and nine men. Even. You're up against ten nine men. And ten know? men, yeah. And and nine after sixty well, minutes. And that's so. another point, actually. That especially yeah. when it was just ten men. I think by once it was nine, it was a different game in that regard. But they were putting far too much pressure on our defense when when we, when when we, we had that man advantage, and that's not good as far as us holding the ball, especially in the middle of our midfield, which is a recurring theme. But you know, despite mm-hmm. that, again, and this is why I think these guys merit some praise. Uh, you know, they held their own. They didn't. They didn't show. You know, there have been games where even with a man advantage, we've looked so erratic in the back that you could still expect some trouble back there you know and you know they were solid i, I you know that's all yeah. that's all i have to say I, I, I you're, and you're right There's, it has to I, be able, there needs to be an asterisk because of the advantage but yeah i guess if i have to pick someone uh i, I liked adriano today yeah uh, came back Very from stabilizing a course. lengthy absence yeah. um and i think he especially in the first half he had a lot of good recoveries um and i you know didn't play as special game but i think he was solid i think gukan gunnel was solid again mm-hmm. who's been solid he's been for weeks consistent. he's been one of our uh, most really. consistent performers honestly yeah for sure uh, apart from that um it's i find it difficult to to say well okay mustafa pektemek uh it's kind of the obvious choice but uh i he's not giving like you know it's not like his performance today completely inspires me with, oh, we found our striker. <laughs> people were joking that he's a new we, Come on, guys, chill. Because <laughs> clearly we still have to do big, we have big work, big homework on that front uh, this this coming January. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think 
the, the, our two backs were were fine today, uh, but nothing special that jumps out to me. I didn't think. That, and specifically, uh, though, I want to make a was... note of that uh, before we totally turn the page on Pektimek. I would like to note that even like literally the play before his first goal, he was completely out of position on a counter attack, and I was like, "Where the hell?" You know, so like you can't be too, you know, swayed by the flashy, you know, stats always. I mean, okay, look, he had a good game. I don't even want to take that away. But, you know, he also he also showed a lot of weakness that doesn't come out on the, the end result, on the stat line, you know. So, But anyway, yeah. Yeah, I think if you see the hunger that Guven had in that, that, that 14 minutes that he got to play, I think uh, he showed that he needs to get oh, yeah. more minutes. I, I'm totally not agree. saying that he should be starting. Uh, the next game or or the next couple of games, but give him fifteen twenty minutes Especially per game. Especially in a four four um, two, where you know he, maybe you don't have to fully rely on his performance, but you're also giving him the space to maybe do something to contribute. And I think yeah, he showed the ability. You have to say that. Yeah, of course you're up against players that have been a team has been playing with with a man down for almost the entire game and then two men down for the final yeah. third of the game. So they're tired. They have, to, you know, their legs are tired. Their legs are heavy. Uh, and he showed some things where he was exploiting their them defensively with with some nice swift movements and getting himself creating himself chances. Uh, would that be possible against eleven players that aren't maybe as fatigued? I don't know. But what we've seen from him so far. Uh, which isn't much, but we've seen him in a, in a friendly too against Altinordo, where he was where he was decent. I think there's something there that he needs to get a couple more minutes, um, and just re- regularly getting 10, 10, 15 minutes. You know, back in the day, if if there's any uh, pest players or or winning eleven players, you know, the way you did it when you were developing <laughs> youngsters in your in your master league mode, you know, you 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 put them on for twenty or thirty minutes, and they'd get experience and they would become better. You know, that's that's not just in games that that works. In well, real the reason life it's too, programmed so into games hope, is because it's reflective of reality. Yeah. You know, like that. Uh, you know, of course, it's not as mm-hmm. black and white as it is in that game, but uh, I hope that Guven is going to get a little bit more time there. It's, it's unfortunate for him that we're not in the Turkish Cup this season because he would have benefited from that. There's a couple more kids like that, like Dorokan. To be honest, uh, I, I, I kind of thought the TFF was going to cave on that, even after all of this. I really thought it might be like, you know what, this is not going to be good for the cup, you know, at the end of the day, you want to get people to watch it on TV, and Besiktas is like, you know, like, I honestly thought they would cave, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm glad they didn't. It, it probably uh, helps us, yeah. It declutters our, our, our schedule, sure. and hopefully we can, you know, uh, to me, it's just we're at a point right now where we're trying to limit damage until January, and then just hope that that January window can bring us some new blood that that much needed uh, striker and that that guy settles and, and performs because you see how despite much, the like, fact having John Nair out, like uh, in fit you know not having him playing in games that don't really matter has actually been a very you know important position for us so far so yeah you know you're right Despite of, of, of how much we have criticized Shinel Gunesh and his reluctance to change and his reluctance to uh, you know, yeah, just for just reluctance to change and the fact that that he hasn't been able to turn things around, despite all that criticism, which stands regardless of the end result of this season. I think that criticism is is warranted and stands. But if you get a good striker, uh, if you get that's a, such a, that's such an instrumental uh, position. If like we saw with Galatasaray last season, you know, look at the difference between Galatasaray now Galatasaray last season. That's it's, it's like night and day. Just because last season they had a striker that was really relieving so much pressure off them by scoring goals, uh, and yeah, you know, Love is scoring, but he's not weighing on the defense. He's not contributing, pos- uh, you know, majorly. So if we can get that striker this January, that could change things. Given the fact of how bad our rivals are, uh, Galatasaray are better than us, but they're still bad. Uh, Bashakshi here are by far right now. The, the least bad of the, of, 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 of the crop, but I don't, I, none of the teams that is realistically going for the title this season has impressed me. Like Bashakshir a couple of years ago, they were impressive. Mm-hmm. Like two years ago or three years ago when they were fighting us for the title, 
Uh, they were impressive two years ago. Um, then last season, when they were basically Galatasaray's biggest challenger, they dropped the ball on multiple occasions. I thought they weren't as good as they were the season before when they were challenging us, when they were just at, at some point just seemingly winning everything with their with both their you know with their fingers up their noses. Um, and that's not the vibe I'm getting from them right now. They they aren't that good right now. It might have to do with the fact that Emre Belazoglu is kind of being phased out. He was so instrumental for their play. Um, I think that's definitely a factor there. But my point being is that none, nobody is impressive right now. So a big transfer this January could actually turn things around. Now, I know I've been quite ne- very negative the last couple of weeks about our chances. I-, I don't believe that we're going to win the title this year because of how bad we are. But on the other hand, our rivals really aren't either. So this season is really going to be, unless, you know, Bashakshir really steps it up in the coming weeks, I think this season is really going to be, the champion is going to be the least, the least worst bad. Yeah, exactly. No, and yeah. you know, it's interesting. I think... Even if injuries necessitated it and it was not an intentional move by Shinal Ganesh, like you could at least hope that he saw the value of it after the fact, right? Maybe he'll say, geez, maybe I really need to stick with this 4-4-2 see what happens next match yeah but we we also have to say again that there, there there wasn't really a plan i had the impression like it was just i just had the feeling right now that Shilong Gunish puts up a lineup uh regardless of the formation but he puts on 11 players on the page and he just sends them out there and and, and basically yeah, you go figure see it out happens. yourself and i i recently saw an interview with um i think it was wayne rooney and he was talking about the days under sir alex ferguson was it Rooney? I think it was Rooney. And, and basically what he said was, you know, what Sir Alex used to do in, in many of the games was he just put the, the, the players on the sheet and we'd go out there and there's like three, four guys, like the leaders of the team, Skulls, Giggs, uh, Rooney at the time. Neville, I think maybe, and, and we'd figure it out ourselves on the pitch. We'd decide when to press, when to sit back a little bit, when to do this, when to do that. That was the, up to the players. And then he said, and then for the big games, out Sir Alex got his tactics right. And then he really hammered home the tactics. But for the the games against you know Norwich or, or Newcastle or whatever, he'd basically leave it up to the players. I have the impression that Channel Gunesh similar. Like, for those European games, like, okay, this season in Europe, we haven't seen that. But we have to say, and we have to give credit where credit is due, in the Champions League, in the Europa League, the past two, the previous two seasons, Chanel's game plans have been spot on in most of those games. And you could really see the hand of a coach in those games. Like, that wasn't just the players going out and just, you know, doing whatever. That was... Those were tactical victories, and we were tactically solid, especially last season in the Champions League. Um, but I just have the impression that Sean was doing that way too much, perhaps here as well. Like, like I said, oh, it's such a shame we didn't have the podcast last year because I've known I've said this a few times already with the Bashakshi here thing, where I I have a hard time understanding how Chanel can adjust himself in a positive way in Europe to the opponent and, and and capitalize on their strengths and weaknesses and, and, and develop a game plan to, to combat them. But then he just seems so stubborn and absolutely reluctant to do that when he when we're playing Bashak Shahir because in all this every single game we've played against Bashak Shahir, they do this they do the same thing every game. Yeah. They just put high pressure on the ball and they they, they isolate our, our worst defender and, and, and just let him have the ball, and, and you know he has he's forced to kick it up the field. Um, not not worst defender in in, in defending sense, but yeah, in build up sense. Um, yeah, I mean it'll be interesting. And, Next and, week's gonna be a test, right? Yeah, but the channel is reluctant. Doesn't he? He just keeps stubbornly saying, "Look, we are Bishiktash. We're the strongest team. They should be adjusting to us. We're not gonna adjust to them." That's what he's saying in my eyes, and he just keeps doing that. Bam, bam, bam. Head against the wall. Uh, and 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 I think he needs that. If that's if that's arrogance, then he needs to get rid of that because it's going to cost him his hide. Yeah, I mean, well, so let's 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 move things along because right? I, I I think things are moving yeah. in this direction. 
what about lowlights today? Is there a player you'd highlight? I mean, let's let's avoid Chanel as the target uh, since we won four to one. Like, who would your lowlight be? Because I think there are a few. I think Wagner Love was very um wasn't really involved up until the up until the opponent got tired and were down to nine men. Uh, maybe a little bit before that because he cost a penalty, but first half I, I barely saw him. Uh, I think he wasn't particularly yeah, good. Yeah, he was. He was um, yeah. The fact that uh, go, well, I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna keep it on Wagner Love and let <laughs> you pick yours. Yeah, and I think you're right. I think Wagner Love. Um, you know, all those little touches that just don't that just get away from him. And he doesn't have the pace mm-hmm. to make up for that anymore. It, 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 it's really laid bare his deficiencies, I think, that he may have used his athleticism to rel- to, to kind of uh, <clears throat> hide previously in his career. But anyway, to do some variation on that, <sighs> where do I go? I mean, I, I think I would probably focus on Ozan. Because, um, and you know, and generally, I think the center of the midfield was not particularly good, and that includes Atiba. But at least with Atiba, as always, he showed that heart, and, and like you know, he'd put in the extra hustle to put put his head on a ball that, you know, and clear it out. You didn't get much of that from Ozan. He ghosted again, and again, you know, when we were ten, when when, when we had a when a man up. And, and what should have been a huge advantage against a very weak side. We were allowing them to attack way too much. And they had far too many crosses into the box and little counterattacks that, you know, luckily didn't go too far. And again, credit to our defense. But that that's where when you have a solid midfield, you should have guys who are like, look, we have this advantage. Let's space out. Let's distribute the ball carefully. Let's hold the ball so that we can kind of give, you know, we can use this to our advantage. We can use less fatigue in general. Uh, and beyond that, maybe put some goals in and give us a little confidence going forward, especially against a club like Bashak And luckily, look, we scored those four goals, you know, a lot of them in kind of garbage time. But, um, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I feel like that's the job of, in particular, Ozan, because he's the sort of creative piece <clears throat> of that midfield unit. Uh, he was not, you know, he wasn't active enough. He wasn't holding the ball. He wasn't playing that role of distributing carefully. He wasn't terrible. And, and I think it's when you have a four to one victory like this, it's it's kind of hard to find someone who really was glaringly bad, especially when the one goal was such a sort of aberration. And there's um, maybe one thing that we should point out is is the fans that yeah, you know, that's, Quaresma... I wanted to bring that that I wanted to close my criticism <laughs> of Ozan by saying, despite the fact that he was pretty poor, he did not deserve to be booed, especially because the result was going our way in the way that it was. On a day like this, you you know, you you, you say, look, we leave well enough alone. We're winning at that point three to one. Come on, you know, I don't think there was any need to boo. Yeah, him. but they, they, they cheer, they, they chant Quaresma's name after he misses a penalty, which to me at this point, I think missing a penalty is unacceptable. Mm-hmm. Uh, it wasn't 5-0 at that point. It was 2-1. You need to score that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think his miss was far worse than, than, than Ozzy's yeah. miss last week against Gustepe. And then, you know, the fans chant his name, um, which I'm fine with, but then don't boo Ozan exactly. when he gets subbed off. I think Ozan doesn't... That's the last thing Ozan needs. Like, clearly he is... He needs support from the fans. And, and this isn't the first time that the fans have booed him, which I don't understand. Like he's he's 26 years old and he's under a long-term contract with us. The way he's playing right now, he's not gonna get sold off anytime soon. We need to get him his confidence back. Our fans mm-hmm. need to be behind him. Uh, Quaresma can take can take a boo. Ozan needs support. He's gonna be here for five more years uh, unless he gets sold or four, four or five, I don't know exactly how long his extension, I think it was five. In, in a pragmatic four. sense, his um, being booed, if, if you really don't like him and you want him sold, booing him is not going to help that either, <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, plus, I mean, it's just not 
deserved. It's I not, think that really there's isn't. players who deserve it a lot more. Uh, yeah, I get it. You know, you expect the world from Olsen. I expect the world from Olsen. I expect so much more from him too. But the fact that he isn't... I, I don't think he's... He's not playing bad on purpose, you know? And booing him... That's not gonna. That's not gonna help. That's not gonna fix the situation. Um, and and I know that that might might make me a little bit like a hypocrite because I said that the booing was justified in the in the gang game. But the difference there is that the booing was for everyone, except for for Gukhan. But now they really singled out uh, Gukhan and, and Metal. But now they really singled out Olsan, and that 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 to me is 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 no, not done. Um, so maybe a little bit of a low light for the fans. Although I do have to say that. They turned out in, in Groves today, I think it was near, well, I'm not sure if it was filled to capacity, but I think we were at least 35,000 uh, in the stadium on a weekday. Um, so that's great, I think. Yeah, so yeah. maybe they deserve both a, 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 a plus and a, and a minus there. That's but, true. Uh, uh, but, you know, I will even say that when we were winning handily and fine, like I think we were all in a bit of a stupor there, but you know, we were up 2-0 and there was not a lot of noise. And I think there was genuinely this confusion, like, what is going on here? Because Pectamek was, you know, doing Rabonas <laughs> and scoring multiple goals. Like, what? I think there was a, to be fair, a general confusion around the stadium. But at the same time, like, I would have, like, I was confused, but also somewhat joyous about it, you know? So, I, uh, you know, there could have been more. I think if I think the, That's a the, good low the light. I, I give the I crowd a low light. There, there you go. I think the crowd gets. I think it's not so abnormal that the crowds get actually less rowdy because I thought they were really rowdy in the beginning of the game and really, you know, good chance and all that going on. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it died down a little bit, but I think it's normal when you're leading a game yeah. comfortably against ten men. Uh, okay, it comes to one in the second half, but and there was actually think, a fairly good spirit, and this is positive, I think, a fairly good spirit between them and the Rize fans as well. You know, they were kind of going back and forth, chance and. Um, mm -hmm. You know, maybe maybe the we did, our fans were were not trying to rub it in, but the, whatever. <laughs> I guess it's not a negative. Yeah, at least we weren't doing uh, ole ole. You know, yeah, exactly. I remember a couple of years ago. Uh, remember that 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 travesty of a penalty that Galatasaray got against uh, Trabzonspor, mm -hmm. and then uh, Sally Dursun gave the the referee a card. <laughs> oh um, yeah. But, you know, they won that game 2-1 to one due to that penalty, which was never a penalty. And then, then uh, Trabzon was down to nine or eight men, and then their fans actually had the gall to start chanting Ole every time they passed the ball around. <laughs> that was so uh, despicable. And I just, I'm happy that doesn't happen here, although the scenarios were very different. But All right. Yeah, I think... Khan, uh, well, well, last, if... last word uh, before we, we wrap it all up. And I thought mm -hmm. I'd uh, maybe again give it to you to say something about... What, you know, so Saturday, this coming Saturday, the 3rd of November, uh -huh. Basakshi here will be hosting Besiktas. Uh, that's yeah. noon here in New York City, so that's going to be a 7 p.m. in Istanbul, 6 p.m. for you guys, Khan. Um, yeah. That's a huge match, you know. Say a word or two about it before you take us out. Uh, my, what I'll add or what I'll say is that it's a huge game, and our, I think in a way it's a very pivotal game. Our whole season, you know, we can't rest on our laurels. We, we, we beat a team that's in the relegation zone of the table. Uh, Bashakshi here is a, this is a huge game, and it's a huge opportunity to instill some yep. confidence and maybe, you know, have us feel a little bit better going forward. But it's also a huge opportunity for us to, to and I'm going to pull out the beefs here, but to shake the bed and, you know, all of the positivity yeah, for sure. going forward is gone, it right? You need to keep in mind that that's also the same for them. This is a huge opportunity for them to deal a, a rival a significant blow. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, in in the past few years, whenever Bashakir have been in that kind of situation against us, they have uh, delivered. Mm -hmm. um, they're f definitely our Angstgegner, our black sheep, if you will. So uh, I, I don't think that. Well, you know what? Uh, in years in years past, when we were good or decent, uh, I I always expected us to do something in this game. So maybe the fact that we're not good right now uh, will, turn the will help us. Uh, it, it doesn't matter how, if you get a complete house win, uh, it doesn't matter if you can get three points from this game, it will be absolutely massive, but I, I wouldn't uh, bet on it. Yeah, so uh, that's, that's it for me. I think the most likely result, given that things might be actually a little tentative because of how much is on this game for both sides, 
Uh, I think the most likely result is probably a draw, and I would imagine yep. some somewhat conservative draw, even you know maybe not the most mm -hmm. exciting match of all time. <laughs> but let's hope for so. something else. Let's totally hope for you know maybe Peck de Go, maybe we'll be transported mm -hmm. back to the summer of 2011 again, Khan. Uh, but <laughs> yeah. until then, until the summer of 2011 harkens back, take us out. <laughs> Yeah, uh, as always, all our social media and Twitter handles can be found in the description below. I don't really have anything much more to add uh, besides, uh, well, three important points today. Uh, and we're, we're in the middle of the title race. I, I You know, I'm, I'm not too confident in it, but uh, at least we're mathematically in the thick of it. So um, that's good. Um, See, so don't take us out, man. I don't have anything left uh, to say. Go Bajiktas! Go Bajiktas! We're back in fourth <laughs> place! Yeah, seven more games and then hopefully a good striker. Three points out of first. One point yeah. back on the guys in second and third. Uh, it is Kasim Pasha. Man, we're, just, we're definitely yeah, in. Well, like, Europe They're is gonna, looking better. Europe is looking They're better. They're not going to keep it up. Anyway, man, I'm, uh, I'm off now. You're Speak out, to you later. Howdy. All right, man. Um, you. Peace. You. Besiktas International hopes you enjoyed this program.